He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. What song? Um, All right. Good morning, church family. How are you guys doing this morning? Blessed. Blessed. All right. So today we're going to be going to Psalm chapter 3. And hey, thank you for watching on TikTok. If you're live on uh, YouTube, please give me a victory in Jesus. And uh, like and subscribe. Anyway, this morning we're going to Psalm chapter 3. You know, save me. Oh my God. That's the, that's the title of this psalm. It's the psalm of David from when he fled from his son Absalom. You know, so many times we think we have problems in life where our whole life's falling apart. David was running from his son who was seeking to kill him. And during this whole time, he wanted to see everything work out good between him and his son. He wanted to work out with his family. Understand that... As Christians, we will go through rough times, but what the Bible promises, what God promises us, is that he's with us through it all, and we can stand firmly on that. And in order to, to reach that next mountain peak, we got to go through a valley, even if that valley is the valley of the shadow of death. God will be with you. He will bring you through it, and you will come out the other side stronger. You just have to have faith and understand that God works all things to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So, Psalm chapter 3, verse 1. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. They are saying of my soul, there is no salvation in him. For him in God. You know how many people say that? You know, when I was first studying to be a pastor, I had people tell me I couldn't be, the, be a pastor because I was a biker. I had somebody else tell me I couldn't be a pastor because they considered me the devil. You know what? God's the one that judges us. And it's by his mercy and his grace that we're able to do things. that We've been forgiven. And it's not based on our works, our past, or anything. There is hope for you, and it's not too late. Don't worry about what others say. Put your trust in God. It says, But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. And I love that because if we cry out to God, God's going to hear us. God's going to answer us. His answers are going to be yes, no, or not right now. As Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, not my will, but your will. We got to understand that God knows what's best and we need to trust him. But God wants that open relationship. He wants us to be able to communicate with him. God hears you. He hears you in your pain. I lay down and I slept and I woke again. For the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around me. And why is that? Why wouldn't you be afraid of thousands of people surrounding you? Think about this. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. All those who rise up against me shall fall. If you are standing for the Lord, if God is in it, it don't matter what comes against you, God will win it. You know, 1 John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If that's the Holy Spirit within you, then there is nothing in this world that can come up against you to destroy you. Your flesh at some point may be destroyed, but you're going to live eternally with Christ Jesus. So long as you've put your trust in him. It says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Selah. And I love that because that Selah, that, that's, a, that's a repeat, you know. So it's arise, the Lord, save me for the strike. For, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the mouth of the wicked. The salvation of the Lord 
Your blessing be on all your people. And what does it take to be a person of God? It, it means to, to put trust in him. To accept what Jesus did. Anybody can be a child of God. You know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, that includes you, put your name there, that your name believes in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. It says in 3.17, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come here to kick us or put us down or tell us we're not good enough because we all fall short of God's glory. No one would be good enough. No, it says he didn't come here to condemn us, but the world through him might be saved. All we got to do is believe in what Jesus did for us. Have a heart that's willing to no longer live for ourselves, but to live for God. That's a change. It's called repentance. You know, Romans 10 9 and 10 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So it's, it's, it's important to, to be able to, to confess, to say, hey, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and, and to truly mean it. And, and you might be saying, well, I've done all this in my past and I can't even forgive myself. Well, you know, 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, Jesus did it all. It's not based on your works. It's based on what Christ done for you. Start a relationship with Christ Jesus today. It makes an eternity a difference. Amen. If you do that, you know you're going to heaven. Jesus loves you, so do I. Be blessed.